Hello, this is Mr. Weideman at Lafayette High School. This is our functions and trigonometry class. Uh, this is a help on your delta math assignment. And uh, on your trig graphing assignment, this is one of the uh, multiple choice questions. And it looks something like this. You'll see a graph, and not shown here, but down below it, um, you'll have, uh, I think it's uh, four or five choices to choose from. And you've got to match which equation matches this graph. Um, the first thing that we want to do is we need to identify if it's a sine or a cosine. Uh, we want to find out its amplitude. We want to look for uh, vertical shifts. And we want to look for horizontal stretches and shrinks. Okay, so the first thing that we do is similar to what we did before when we got this graph, let's look for a vertical shift, all right? Let's find the neutral axis of this graph, and if it's above or below the x-axis, then we know that we have a vertical shift. All right, so how do we find that neutral axis for this graph? Well, so there's my graph, and... Uh, I see my neutral axis is right here at 150. Now, how did I figure that out? Well, I look and see that the graph goes as high as 350 and as low as negative 50. Add those two numbers together, 350 plus negative 50 is 300. Divide by 2, that's 150. And there's the neutral axis. And I've kind of sketched it in there, um, and that looks about right. Uh, we can see that the amplitude, the bumps and the dips look to be about the same size. All right, so this tells me a couple of different things. First of all, it tells me that I have a vertical shift uh, that I need to put it as the letter D in my equation of 150 units. Um, second thing is this will tell me if it is a sine or a cosine curve by the way that it starts. Okay, so this is what I'm looking for by the way it starts. Look at the y, uh, the y intercept, if you will. Okay, so here's one scenario right here. This is a positive sine function, and we've drawn this many times, and it always starts at 0, comma, 0, and it makes a bump. But let's say it has a y-axis reflection. Still, it starts at 0, comma, 0, and makes a zip, uh, I mean a dip. I say 0, comma 0, I should say um, the y-axis and the neutral axis where they intersect. But the, that point I have highlighted there, it starts at the neutral axis and then goes either up or down, okay? It, right there at that one intercept. So that tells me it's a sine function, okay? Now, what if it looked like this? Okay, I see my neutral axis, and it doesn't start on the neutral axis. It starts above it, and it looks like it's making a half a bump. Or sometimes I can have a reflection of that, and it starts below the neutral axis, and it looks like it is um, making the, the latter half of a dip. But either way, um, look at how the starts. Look at how it's, it's, uh, these two graphs are different. Uh, the sine function always starts at the intersection of the y-axis and the neutral axis. The cosine function always starts above and below the neutral axis. Those are your only choices. You know, these are either going to be sine functions or cosine functions. Since we've already established the neutral axis, it's pretty easy to figure out. This guy um, starts right here and starts going down. So that is a sign with a reflection, all right? So I put negative sign. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do, we've already got a lot of our work done for us. We've got that vertical shift. Uh, let's look at the amplitude, okay? So how do I look at the amplitude? I look at the max, and I look at the min and split the difference. Okay, I see from the max to the min is a total distance of 400 units, so I split the difference, okay? What's half of 400? 200. So if I look everywhere from the neutral axis, it goes up 200 units. From the neutral axis, it goes down 200 units. So that's my amplitude. So I can do pretty much uh, most of my equation 
right here. And this is going to narrow down a whole bunch of your choices right there. The type of function, whether it has a uh, x-axis reflection or not, amplitude, vertical shift. Okay, the last thing that you're going to need to figure out then is, it does this have a stretch or a shrink? How are we going to find that out? Let's see if this has a coefficient of b. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to look at the graph and we're going to have to find the period. Okay, and we see on our graph, look where the shape repeats. It takes the 16 units and then I get to, um, I get to right here. And when I get to right here, the shape repeats again. I've got it highlighted there in yellow. It takes 16 units to do that, right? So every 16 units, i got to repeat the shape. So I plug this into my formula. Period is equal to 2 pi over b. My period is 16 units. So I solve for b. Do a little algebra here, and I see we have pi over 8. I have everything I need to write out this full equation. I have my amplitude, it's a reflected sine wave, it's shifted up 150 units, and it's got a horizontal compression of pi over 8 units. All right, so in my multiple choice, um, this guy right here, this is what I'm looking for to choose. Okay, I hope we find this helpful.